Welcome back. First section of Unit 6, kiddies. Today we're going to do uh, a little some stuff similar that we did to uh, Unit 5 on equations of linear functions. This whole unit we're going to focus on writing equations of linear functions. Today we're going to just practice something we've, we've done before, but we're going to add some twists to it. We're going to talk about writing equations in slope-intercept form. All right, so first let's start off, ooh, dreaded word problem here. But let's say we have, uh, and here's a situation uh, that we're going to be dealing with kind of in this chapter with some word problems and other things. Uh, but our goal in this, in the end, is to be able to write um, an equation of this problem. Now, this hopefully may be familiar to what we've done last chapter. Uh, so let's go through it. So obviously, if you've been watching my videos, I talk way too much and I apologize that but I love to hear my voice and I know you guys do too but I know that I have to cut back so I'm going to try and talk a little faster and get these things done uh, my first video let's say my first video made was 27 minutes long but you know what I want to like I said I want to try and cut back and make these shorter um, so to cut back I'm going to try and eliminate two minutes from each video so let's say I want to take this problem and represent it both graphically and as an equation and through a table. Uh, so first of all, when we fill out a table, we have to think about what are the two things I'm talking about. Well, really I'm talking about uh, the number of minutes I have in a video. So number of minutes. And then I'm also representing, obviously, each video. So if I look at this table, my two labels, the first one that I have here, um, really this is looking at the number of videos. And this is just represented by not a hashtag, but a number. Okay, so zero videos, one, two, and three. Um, and then for each video, we are describing what's changing is the number of minutes. Um, min stands for minutes. I guess I'll write that out for you. Um, so I'm going to put that in my table there with units of minutes. So first one, when I have zero, what does that mean for a number of videos zero? Well, that's, my, that's like where I start. Well, I know that I'm starting my initial value is going to be 27 minutes. That's my first video I ever made. Now, every video that I make after that, um, notice it says that we're going to try and eliminate two minutes each video. So after one more video, I'm going to eliminate two minutes. So that's going to take me down to 25 minutes. Um, then I'm going to take me down to 23 and to 21. Okay, so again, what we want to do is trying to represent this table um, on this graph. So on this graph, what we're going to do is we're going to put the number of videos down here. I know it didn't show up on the graph, but we're going to put the number of videos here on the X, and we are going to put the number of minutes up here on the Y, okay? Now, uh, my graph is not labeled, so I'm going to have to go ahead and label these things. So I know that I'm going to three, so I'm going to go, I'm just going to skip every other one. So I'm going to say that's one, two, three, four, and so on. Um, and then my Y, my number of minutes, I go all the way up. So I'm just going to label this here, two, three, and four, even though I only go up to three. Um, but minutes is going up all the way up to 27. So I'm going to count by, let's say, Let's say by five, okay? By five works. So I'm going to go here, every other, I'm going to go by five, then 10, then 15, then 20, holy cow, then 25, then 30. That should be enough. Okay, now what I want to do is take this data and I want to graph it. So uh, the first one, my, my number of videos is zero. My initial value is going to be all the way up at 27. So that's going to be slightly after... Uh, 25, so I'm going to place that right there, it's about 27. Then at one video, video I'm at 25, so one video would be about here at 25. Then it's going to go down to 23, so at two videos it's going to be at about 23, that's about halfway in between there. And then three videos I'm at about 21, so that would be something about there. So as you can see, when I plot these points, I obviously get the uh, linear function here. And this is stuff that we've done last chapter, again, with taking a table and plotting on a graph. But what our goal is for it to do, um, <laughs> I can't really talk, but what our goal is to do in this, uh, this section is we're going to take this graph of this equation and write um, an equation that represents it. So remember there was two things that we talked about last chapter that really helped us to graph. Um, this initial value and what we call the rate of change. So remember these two things, the initial value, we represent it as our y-intercept. So if we think of our data, what is our y-intercept? Well, our y-intercept here is a value of y when x is 0. Or graphically, it's the point where the graph hits the line. 
So we know in this one that our y-intercept is equal to 27. That's my initial value. And my rate of change describes how things are changing, otherwise known as my slope. And this we could view from the graph or from the table. I'll show you from the table. Uh, notice that each time it's going down 2, down 2, down 2. So my slope here would be equal to negative 2. So if I wanted to write this as an equation, my rule would be y equals, the number of minutes is going to equal um, negative 2x plus 27. Okay, And again, this is simply written in slope-intercept form. Remember, slope-intercept form looks like y equals mx plus b. So what we did in this example is exactly what you're going to be trying to do uh, in this lesson. Okay, so here are the steps to write an equation in slope-intercept form. And in order to do these next couple problems, you're going to need to follow these steps. So make sure you write them down, and as you go through examples, follow these steps. The first thing, and the most important thing, is we're going to find the slope of our line. Um, as we saw, we can find this from the table. You can find this on a graph. I guess I forgot to put table here. Um, and also remember that we have our formula for slope, that the slope between any two points is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. The goal is you're just going to have to be able to find the slope in different ways. The next step, once you find the slope, is to find the y-intercept. Graphically, again, that's the place where it crosses the y-axis. Um, otherwise, the key thing here is you're going to look for any point where x is equal to 0. So you're going to see, for example, like 0, 2. If I see that value, I know that that 2 is my y-intercept because the y-intercept is where x is equal to 0. Then all I'm going to do is take my slope and my y-intercept. Remember, these are like my two ingredients. And I'm going to take and plug those dang things into my equation, and I should be all Gucci there. All right, so first example, let's say um, I give you the slope and the y-intercept. What would my equation be? So again, slope-intercept form is y equals mx plus b. So remember that m represents the slope, b represents the y-intercept. If I give that to you, it's easy enough to just plug in. So I'm going to have 4x. Um, plus negative 6, if we want to throw that in, which, again, you can rewrite as 4x minus 6. As a review, how do I take this and graph this equation? Remember, when I graph this, I'm going to start with my initial value, like we did in the first example, of negative 6. So my intercept represents where I start. So I'm going to go on my graph, and I'm going to go down 3, 4, 5, 6, down to negative 6. And then once I have my y-intercept, I'm then going to apply my slope. So my slope here, again, my slope is 4, but remember, we always place that as 4 over 1. We want to view it as a rise up versus my run to the right. So rise over run. So I'm going to go up 4 over 1, which is going to take me to there, up 4 over 1 to there. Um, and I can keep going, but I'm just going to stop there. I have enough points. Remember, you only really need two to draw my line. Okay, so if I give you the slope and the y-intercept, it should be pretty easy to just plug it in, but don't forget how to graph these functions. Okay, next one. We've done this before, too. Uh, let's go ahead and write the equation if it's given to you on a graph. So, again, the two things we need to figure out. First thing, let's figure out the slope. Well, how do I look at this graph and find the slope? Well, notice here that you're given two points. You're given a point here and a point here. So, graphically, all you have to do is figure out the rise over the run. So, when we read a graph, remember, we read it from left to right. So starting with this point, I'm going to go up two units and right three units. So that means my slope is going to be rise over run, two over three. Up two, right three. Uh, and then the next thing I need to do is find my y-intercept B. Finding my y-intercept is the point where it crosses the y-axis, which I can see here. I know that this point is when x equals zero and y equals negative one. So again, it's the point where x equals zero. So my y-intercept is going to be negative 1. Now I just take and plug this in to slope-intercept form, y equals mx plus b. And I'm going to plug in my slope, which is 2 over 3x. And my b is minus 1. And voila, I have my equation. So pretty simple, recognizing slope and y-intercept from our graph. Next one, what's an equation of a line that passes through the following points? Now this one's a little more challenging. Okay, when you think of slope intercept, I'll just put int form. Remember, I think of this as the ingredient. So first thing you need is the slope. That's number one. The second thing you need is the oopsie daisies, the y-intercept. So those are the two ingredients that you need. This should be a number two. Okay? So 
All right, now what ingredients do I give you? Well, I give you two points. Well, shoot, I don't give you the slope. I don't give you the y-intercept, or do I? Um, so that means if I need them, if those are my ingredients, that means I need to find them. So the first thing that you have to do is find the slope. Well, how the heck do I find the slope if I give you two points? Ah, remember to find the slope, I'm going to use the slope formula, which is to say I'm going to take the difference between the y's and the difference between the x's. Ah, so if this is, I'll define that as a point 2 and this is point 1. If I'm going to find the difference between the y's, I'm going to go negative 8 minus 1. Right, negative 8 minus 1, difference between the y's. And then I'm going to divide that by, well, if again, if I started with negative 8, I'm going to start with 0. It's going to be 0 minus negative 3. Okay, now notice I'm taking and subtracting from a negative, so I'm going to change the sign there to positive, change that to negative, that's going to give me negative 9. Change that to a positive, change that to the sign that follows to a positive, that's going to give me positive 3. What's negative 9 divided by 3? Ah, that is negative 3. Very good. So that's my slope. Now the tricky part is, what is my y-intercept? Well, the y-intercept graphically is very easy to find, but as a point is very difficult to recognize. So what I need you to remember is the y-intercept occurs when x equals 0. So as a point, it's always going to be 0, comma, b, whatever b may be. B, 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 b. So if I look at this second point, notice it is 0, negative 8. So I have 0, negative 8. What does that tell me? Well, this tells me right here that negative 8 is my y-intercept. So I have to recognize that when I give you a point of 0, comma, something, that that number attached with the 0 is your y-intercept. Okay? So this, therefore, my equation will be y equals negative 3x minus 8. Bada bing and the bada da boom. Okay, so this tough one there is actually calculating the slope and recognizing the y-intercept. All right, next equation. Uh, it says write an equation for the linear function f with the given values. Whoa, Jesus. What does this say? Uh, oh, my gosh, this is just funky notation. Well, this says f of 0 equals negative 2 and f of 4 equals negative 3. Remember, this is just function notation. Function notation represents f of x is going to equal y. Okay, so when we see this, remember the value inside the parentheses is simply x and the value outside is y. So what we can do right away is convert these to points. This is a point of 0, negative 2, and this is a point of 4, negative 3. Okay, well, look at this. That's just like the same problem we did in the last example. First thing I want to do is find my slope. Okay, I'm going to define this as point 2, this is point 1. Again, given two points, you're going to have to use the slope formula. All right, so taking a look here, I'm going to do negative 3 minus negative 2. That's y2 minus y1 over 4 minus 0. Uh, simplifying this, I have negative 3 minus, so I'm going to change that to a positive, change the sign that follows, so now I have negative 3 plus 2, which would give me negative 1. 4 minus 0 is 4, so my slope is negative 1 over 4. My y-intercept, again, we're going to look for a point when x equals 0. So notice I have the point right here of 0, negative 2. What does that mean? That means my y-intercept is negative 2. So when I take these two things here and I write my equation, I'm going to get y equals negative 1 over 4x minus 2. Voila. So that one, a little twist there with that dangled function notation. Very good. Oh my god, next one. Jeez, I can't, how, oh my gosh, what do I even do? Ah, a little word problem. Don't freak out. I know you guys freak out with word problems, but again, we have to apply these ideas um, to word problems as well and how to write equations and all that. So remember, we want to write the equation y equals mx plus b. Follow our steps. First thing, let's identify the slope. Then let's identify the initial value or the y-intercept. So what we have here, it says an initial fee to have a website set up is $48. Well, let's think about this. It says initial fee. So wouldn't this initial fee of $48 might be in my initial value, which is B? Oh, yeah. That makes sense. It's my initial fee. It's my initial value. Then it says it costs $44 per month. This should be a radar. Anything you see per or every, remember that represents my slope. So I know it said it's $44 per month to maintain this website. 
So to write my equation in y uh, slope intercept form, I'm going to just take and plug in my values. So it says write the equation that gives the total cost of setting up and maintaining a website as a function of the number of months. Don't get confused by the question, but we know that we're going to write it in slope intercept form, y equals mx plus b. All we had to do is identify the slope and the y intercept, which we did. So I plug it in, I get y equals 44x plus 48. And there's my equation. Again, x here is going to show the number of months, and y is going to show you cost. Okay, so it's just an actual application where we actually would use linear functions. And now, step B is where this is important. Once I have this equation, now the nifty thing that I can use it for is to make predictions. So now I want to know what is the cost for maintaining it for six months. Well, here's what we said, is that the number of months is represented by x. So if I want to know six months, all I have to do is plug this in for x. So in my equation, y equals 44x plus 48. I'm going to take 6 and plug it in for x. I'm going to have y equals 44 times 6 plus 48, and that's going to tell me the cost. So I know the cost y is going to equal $312. So that's $312. So that means for six months it's going to cost you $312 to maintain that website. Not, not that bad, but kind of expensive. So again, it's something you're going to have to consider if you ever have a business and you have to maintain a website. All right, here we go. I want you in these last two examples, I want you to try and find the equations for both. So I want you to pause the video. First one's a graph. Second one, you have two points. Again, follow your steps. Find your slope, your y-intercept, write your equation. Pause the video. Give these a shot. All right, here are your solutions. Uh, first one, had to identify the slope and the y-intercept from your graph. So you should have seen the two points, one there and one there. To go from left to right, you had to go down to right 4, meaning my slope would be negative 2 over 4, which simplifies to negative 1 over 2. Last one, my y-intercept is where it crosses the y-axis. I notice that that's 1, so plugging those things in, I get negative 1 over 2x plus 1. Next one, you had to use the slope formula first to find the slope, so found, again, my two points is point 0.2 and point 0.1. Um, found the slope to be 9 over 6, which simplifies to 3 over 2. Then I had to recognize the first point I give you, 0, 4. Well, remember the y-intercept is when x equals 0. So in that case, when y is 4, x is 0, that's my y-intercept. Plugging this in, I get, neg or, sorry, I get 3 over 2x plus 4. So again, this is writing linear functions in slope-intercept form. Hope you enjoyed, kids. Good luck on the practice. Make sure you write down any questions. We'll see you in class, and my phone is ringing. Peace.